Hey folks, this is Untrusted Life here, and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I've been developing a roguelike since the year 2014 called Rogue Legends Dark Realms. It's a, um, a dark fantasy, Lovecraftian, horror roguelike game, um, which is actually quite fun to play. Um, and I felt like, you know, taking that for a spin for my newest Let's Play video. Um, and hopefully you guys all like it. Um, uh, this, this the main menu music is actually composed by me. <laughs> um, uh, the rest of the music, though, is Disparition and Kevin MacLeod, and then there's also sound effects and stuff like that in the game. You'll see all that. Um, but anyway, it's kind of an atmospheric roguelike game, and I thought I'd just play it on stream and see what you guys thought of it. Um, so, uh, there's a warning. Warning, this game contains disturbing imagery and situations. Yes, it does. Okay, so here we are on the new character screen. Um, so we can choose our class. Um, I'm actually going to choose the Squire. Because that's the new one. Um, and then, you know, if you want to, you can try all the other ones. Um, I might actually make videos with all of them. Um, I'll play through, like, this Squire's life. Um, and then I'll post that. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, but anyway, see, the Squire here has a rusty sword, Squire's armor, torch, starting movements, push, tenacity, swiftness. Um, tenacity is 60, 10, to plus 10 for that stat. Um, swiftness is 3d10 plus 5 for that stat. Tenacity is kind of like your toughness. Swiftness is obviously like your um, uh, speed. Um, and then there's a bunch of others like concentration, um, inducement, which is like charisma, um, inquiry, which is like your investigative skill. All oh, a bunch of things. Um, it's a Lovecrafty and roguelike, so it's got a bunch of investigative elements going on. Um, and also it has a sandy meter. <laughs> well, it's a misery meter, and that's what they, we, I call it, but it's basically a sandy meter. Um, uh, once you get super high misery, weird things start happening to the game to mess with you, um, which is always fun, making it harder and a lot of other things. Um, so here we go. We have chosen the squire, um, and here's our character sheet. Um, uh, as you can see, we have swiftness 26, concentration 20, tenacity 37, inquiry 17, Inducement 9, Composure 89, and Misery 11. So Composure is our sanity, and Misery is our insanity. Um, so, there's a difference. Inducement is like your charisma. Um, inquiry is your investigative skill. Concentration is like your spellcasting skill. It's like your wisdom. It determines how far you can cast spells around your character. So if you have really low concentration, you can only cast a spell right adjacent to you, for example. Um, and the Squire usually has that, but he has 20, so I think that means that he can cast two squares in front of him. Um, runes push. Yeah, yeah, you can, so. That's pretty neat. Um, we, we got lucky with our rolls. But, um, yeah, so we're gonna play, oh, yeah, oh, another thing. This game has procedural monsters, um, procedural items, um, and it also has pre-made monsters and items. Um, most of the pre-made monsters are all around the Lovecraftian theme. The procedurally generated monsters help to add to that, um, but also they're, they're like, you know, the things you fight. Um, uh, when the the big pre-made things are things you run away from and there's also cultists and a bunch of other stuff and crazy things and insanity and uh, different factions and a lot of shit going on but anyway um uh, let's let's see how far we survive um so you see a shadow in the darkness that was the m here it's called a frash oh by the way it's ascii based um uh, but it's kind of like artsy ascii based anyway this creature looks miserable as if its very being is sick breaking green gas flowing from its every pore. It is. It has bulging jet black eyes, a millipede with many limbs. It has a swollen, pale, humanoid face. Ugh. It hates to be seen, and it strikes true always. <laughs> um, so it has high tenacity, which means it'll probably always damage me when it hits me, but we killed it in one hit, so. Haha. <laughs> the weird millipede monster thing. Remember, this is the first level. <laughs> gets crazier. The demon's sixth sense of humor really shows with this cryptic creature. So the goal of the game is to get to the end of the dungeon and you know, banish the demon. Uh, the demon not being a demon in the normal sense. More like a Cthulhu. <laughs> but anyway. Um, this demon's sixth sense of humor really shows with this corrupted creature. It has bulging barrel eyes. A numerous boiled blistered dinosaur. <laughs> so yeah, just like fun procedurally generated monsters along with the pre-made ones. You haven't seen any of those yet, but anyway. Let's just play. Um, it's it's meant to be profoundly disturbing, so there's a lot of really disturbing imagery when you read things. Um, there's also a ton of lore and a bunch of other stuff, but anyway. Um. You 
if you're left in the southwest. Uh, it's it's kind of like a standard roguelike in some senses, but less like a standard roguelike in other senses. If you guys like roguelikes. Uh, I saw a shadow in the darkness. That usually means... Yep. <laughs> the fresh, yep, this thing tried to jump me, but I... I saw the shadow in the darkness, and so I knew it was there. Also, it's a shadow in the darkness. How does that make sense? Who knows? It's a Lovecraftian game. Anyway. Oh, a book. The Guide to the Dark Realms. Um, I'm not going to read that. I already know all about my own game, so... Uh, not even for the benefit of the, the viewer watching this. This creature looks miserable as if its very being is sick. sick. Bright green gas flowing through its every pore. It has horrible maroon eyes and eight skin-flapped rodent-like creature with a slimy body. It is blind and gigantic. It makes sudden quick movements and it has a large protective shell. It's a giant rat with a shell. That's fun. <laughs> Like I said, we're playing as the Squire. They're kind of like a tank, like a barbarian class. Um, which makes it, this beginning part a lot easier for us. Um, it's a lot harder for other characters, but anyway. The water glistens with elemental power. Um, oh yeah, there's fountains you can drink from. Um, bookcases with books in them. Bunch of uh, statues, um, engraved doors. A lot of things. Um, procedurally generated engravings, no less. Um... Of course, because I love my procedural generation. Oh, here we go. Here's an engraved wooden door right here. There's an engraving of the letters R, C here. Okay, so uh, that probably means something. I'm not going to tell you what it means, but it does mean something. Anyway. Yeah, got a healing potion. I'm just going to play it like a normal roguelike <laughs> until things start getting weird. Uh, but let's go down the floor. All right, so we're in a darker part of the dungeon. It's noticeably darker here, so it's harder for us to see. Um... There's level modifiers and stuff like that. There's a... You feel terrified. What? Composure save. All right. So we've seen something horrific. Um, you feel terrified by the horrific, strange tumor, and then we gained... We rolled 1d8 and gained some misery. We failed our composure. Did we... I think... Oh, we passed our composure check, so it wasn't as bad as it could have been. But anyway, what's this thing? A pulsating bloody tumor with a giant hole in it. A realm child tumor. Huh. RC. Anyway. Um... We could crawl into it. <laughs> let's not do that. <laughs> um, in fact, let's destroy it. There we go. Don't want things coming out of it. That happens. <laughs> um, uh, there's a whole backstory to why those things... Oh, God. You feel horrified by a room filled with many corpses. Oh, God. It's a partially liquefied corpse. It's been chewed upon by a venom termite. Oh, yeah, there's randomly generated vermin as well. Partially digested corpse emaciated corpse, a mummified skeleton, a blood-covered note. Huh. I wonder what that means. Oh, jeez. There's just blood everywhere. Halfling corpse. Wait. Didn't mean to pick up the halfling corpse. Uh, drop. Um, anyway, let's read the note. The cultists who dragged me here said they said something about fertilizer. Are they trying to make me into fertilizer? Why would they do that? The note is ripped to shreds and unreadable here. Um, uh, yeah, there's cultists. I forgot, did I, did I mention the cultists? Probably not. But there's cultists. And there's a lot of weird shit going on in this world. Um. Red granite bread. Delicious bread made in the human controlled door versions. Oh, yeah, there's a whole, like, world that it, I know of all the locations of. I built this out. So I built a world and then I built the game around it. Uh, the world I built for actually a Silent Legions game, which is a tabletop game, but, um, like a tabletop Lovecraftian game. Anyway. Um, we have a bunch of stuff here. Um, uh, but we uh, found the sapling corpse. Let's inspect that. Um, we inspected it, and then we found nothing of interest. But sometimes we find stuff of interest. Um, a partially liquefied skeleton. More, more corpses. Yeah, not a fun place. <clears throat> I didn't even see what that was. It's a c <laughs> um, <laughs> the long hallway. It's super dark. Kind of scary. Don't want some horrible monster to jump out at me or whatever. Oh, here we go. So we could explore further, but I think we should just get the hell out of this level. What do you guys think? <laughs> nah, let's let's explore folder. 
Okay, so we found the way out. Um, <laughs> thing tried to attack, and it's just an end of a hallway. Okay. Um. Well, I'm, I'm trying to. We have a water potion. Let's quaff that. We're we're thirsty. It keeps track of all of that stuff. Let's eat some of this delicious bread, right? Awesome. Um. All do we have? We have sparkling bean heart. Salmon. Large bean heart is num numerous sparkles coming off of it. Huh. Apple got of the dark realms. Partially liquefied corpse. Spark partially liquefied skeleton. Sparkles rot of overlands. So another a randomly generated item. It has three fire. Um, it's actually better than our torch. So three three. That's way better than this. So let's just destroy the torch. We don't need that anymore. Um, uh, and let's equip that weapon. I, I kind of want to explore the level more, even if it means I'm probably going to die. <laughs> Let's go into the, the room filled with corpses and see what see what's off the side of it, right? Eh, a wooden crate. And there's another Kuth. It has striking neon red eyes. This is a huge lizard. It has about a dozen anthropoidal, so it has like a bunch, a dozen human legs. Its mouth is filled with immense rows of sharp blood-stained teeth, and it drips around as if it goes. Luckily, we have fire. And there's an antidote. Oh, jeez. A lot of enemies. Okay. What? <laughs> I actually killed myself. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um... Uh... So, when you fail your checks when you kick things, um, it gives you one damage. I failed the check and I was at one health, so I died. <laughs> um, well, I did say I was going to end, this, end the, the episode when my uh, squire died. So I guess that's the end of this episode. This gives you a little taste of what's what's to come, right, in the next episode or whatever. Which I'll definitely do, because this is my game. So And I like playing my games, like Thrive and <laughs> LTR. Um... Uh, I'll put the. <laughs> um, you can get the in development versions of this from my Patreon, or you can get the release version from about a year ago, which is different from this version. Um, at my website, I'll probably link that description. But <laughs> that was a that was a yet another stupid death there. <laughs> it was all my fault. Anyway, see you guys.